Hello everyone. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to use a backup object to create a CSV file from data sampling or event history within your Easy Builder Pro project. To begin, I have a basic project on display which is configured to record some mock data. Let's take a look at the configuration of our data sampling object. To do this, I'll select the Data Slash History tab, and on the left, I'll select Data Sampling. In this menu, I'll click my Data Sampling object, and I'll explain my current configuration. Within this project, I'm logging one word of numeric data from local word zero at an interval of once per second. I have not configured a hold or control address, but I have enabled history files, as this must be enabled prior to creating the object that will generate CSV files within your project. During this demonstration, I have chosen to save all records within a single named file that will be stored within our HMI's internal memory. The preservation limit, as shown below, is set to one day meaning that the history file from the previous day will be saved within the HMI's internal memory, and the file generated on the current day will replace that file on the subsequent day. With the overview of our data sampling object complete, let's close our menu and review the settings of our event log. The event log can be found within the Data Slash History tab next to our Data Logging button. Within our event log, you'll notice that, like our data log, I have enabled history files, the storage location is configured to our HMI's internal memory, and our preservation limit is set to one day. Although these settings will likely vary depending on your application, we must ensure that history files is enabled. Along with this, we should also verify that each alarm that we would like within our CSV has Save to History enabled, although this setting is selected by default. Now let's exit our event log and configure our project to export our CSV files. To do this, I'm going to select the Backup Global object, which you can find within our Data Slash History tab. However, if you are using an IE, EMT, XE, or MTV series HMI, then the backup global object will be grayed out, and you should instead select our backup per page object. Within the following dialog, I'll select New on the bottom left, and within our backup object settings, I'm going to select Historical Data Sampling as my file source. In the Object Index drop-down list, I'll ensure that the data sampling object that I'd like to export is selected. Our storage format is set to CSV, and in this demonstration, all of our data sampled will be saved into one file called data. By setting our split by format to date, our sampled data will be split according to the date in which the data was recorded. This is a great way to keep your data organized, but if this format does not fit the requirements of your application, then you may also choose to export all records to a single CSV or split them by number of rows. I'm going to set our start time to today and configure our range to 1. This will ensure that the latest one file is saved. And I'd like to note that the range configured works in tandem with the preservation limit. For example, our data sampling object will preserve data from the current day as well as data logged the day before. If within our application we configured the backup range to 2, our data log would be split by date and our HMI will export two separate CSV files. At the bottom, We'll leave our bit trigger configured to LB0, and I'll click OK to close our backup object. 
Now I'll create one more backup object. Within this object, we'll set our file source to historical event log. And towards the center, you'll notice that we have a few additional settings. These additional options will allow you to include the export date or alarm statistics like occurrence count and elapsed time within the CSV file. Alarms are assigned to a specific category, which is category 0 by default. Here we can specify event categories that we wish to export, using the specialized syntax. Or we can export all categories, which is the default setting. Below, I'll configure the settings to match the settings of my first backup object. We'll export only the most recent file, and I'll leave LB0 as my external trigger, and then click OK to close my object. Now, I have a few objects on my display. Our data and event log will show our data as it's recorded. The LB0 object is a toggle switch that I've added to export our CSV files. And the two transparent objects on the bottom will generate some fake data for this demonstration. Let's select the Project tab and run an offline simulation. I have my simulation running, and you'll notice that my data sampling object is recording data, and our event log is flashing periodically. Since it's been a few seconds, I'll go ahead and trigger my CSV export, and we've received the message that our backup is taking place. So let's open the installation path of EasyBuilder Pro, and because we're running an offline simulation, our simulation will output our CSV file into a mock USB, which in this case is the USB 1 folder within our directory. I have both an event log and a data log folder, and within either one, we'll find our CSV backup. Let's open our backup so that we can see our data. And with that, I hope you've learned a lot from today's demonstration. In our next video, we'll discuss how to automate this process using our scheduler to either email or transfer the CSV file via FTP. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.